Super Tarantella here. I have been tagged in Tarantula Tag number two. Tarantula Tag number two was started by Dave of Erie Arachnids. And what we do is someone tags someone who is on the other side of the ocean. So we call it, we just say across the pond. So if I'm in the United States, I'm going to tag someone in Asia or um, someone in, in Europe and or someone in Africa and so that's the way that works and then once they're tagged they would tag someone who's on a different continent. I was tagged by Carolina of Carolina's Tarantulas. I adore her and I love her channel. She is hailing from Sweden and if you haven't watched her channel, please go check her out. She is a sweet person and she loves animals and she cares for them. A very intimate level. Um, I think that she is in tune with the animals and really good at reading them. Let's get started with the tarantula tag. The first question is, if you could only keep one genus of tarantulas, what would it be and why? Pick one and only one. Now I've been thinking about this question for most of the day. Gramostola is the genus that came to mind and stuck. And that is also what Carolina chose and I'm sure down the line someone else is going to choose it. Maybe. The reason that I've chosen Grandma Stola is that the Grandma Stola Polka Pace was actually my very first tarantula. And I got this one as a sling. Really tiny. And I opened it up. It was my very first unboxing. I didn't film it. I wasn't part of the tarantula YouTube community yet. Just had this little one about that big. And sure enough, when I opened it up, my little grandma Stola was walking with its little bum in the air and it was so cute. And I had no idea really about tarantula body language. I knew what a threat posture was, but, but no matter how much research I had done online, nothing really beat first-hand experience and that included asking questions about what I observed. So I did ask what this meant and I was told it means, I'm a big spider. And I just thought that was the cutest thing ever. Now, my little grandma stole a poker piece, who is named Little Thing, has molted about four or five times. And I've had this one since December of 2017. This tarantula is very sweet and laid back and will with a little prompting will crawl up the side of its enclosure and onto my hand. One thing that's different about this particular tarantula, this Grandma Stola Pulcher Pace, is that when it touches my hand with one of its little tarantula legs, it doesn't pull back. It continues walking out. And this is something I've seen in videos with people who have Euaphilus species red. But a lot of other tarantulas, they will touch skin and they'll withdraw or turn their body away. I just find this little Grandma Stola Pulchra Pace endearing. I also have a, a Grandma Stola Pulchra. This was my second tarantula. It is funny little tarantula named Snot Gurgle. This one started out as a little brown, not really anything special about, about this little sling, except for the price, <laughs> which was expensive. I just happened to get this one. I was really lucky. But it molted, and after it molted out of being brown and more dull, it was shiny black and furry. So, you know, I really got it at that, that time when, you know, it was almost a juvenile. And then th the attitude changed. And that was the very first tarantula that I really held, was my grandma stole a pulchra. Um, very slowly crawled across my hand. And uh, after molting, uh, became rather skittish. So since then, it's molted a couple more times and 
it's really uh, comfortable in its habisphere where it's living. I have not handled my Gramostola pulchra. Again, our Gramostola genus are beautiful and laid back and they have size, they have, they can, they, they just, they're just like big cuddly monsters. Lovable, cuddly monsters. What can I say? Question number two is, what advice would you give to new keepers? I'm thinking back to when I first started with tarantulas, which wasn't too long ago. I started out watching a lot of YouTube videos before I even thought that I would own a tarantula or that I would bring a tarantula into my home. I got very excited about it and I really wanted it to happen. But it was something that I never thought I would do because I had been phobic and terrified of spiders. So when the time came and, and I had ordered my first tarantula, I had done a lot of research. And I didn't just go on Google. I also went to forums. I went to Facebook groups. I asked questions. And in the beginning, thinking back, I had a little bit of overconfidence. I had this idea that I was going to set up the perfect habitat for my tarantulas based on where they came from. And when I did this, I ignored a lot of the general advice and the way that tarantulas are kept in the hobby. I found out that sometimes trying to replicate their natural environment doesn't always work. And this can be for several reasons. I think that it's really important to do a lot of research that involves asking people questions, finding out who has owned tarantulas or been around tarantulas for a long time, and taking several different sources of information and comparing them. So if you go on Google and you find that they say to keep tarantulas on this tarantula on sand, but then you go on to an arachno boards, for example, and they say this tarantula needs to be kept on, you know, a mixture of peat moss and sand and um, cocoa fiber, then you, you, you can see that there's conflicting information and so it would be good to go out and do more research and find out what really works for this tarantula. Myophonopoma calcades, I was so excited because I love the desert in the United States in the Southwest and I love to go down there and go hiking and I'm becoming more and more familiar with the landscape. And so I thought, well, I know what it looks like around Tucson, Arizona. I will set her up with the perfect habitat. So I tried to, and I used sand, and I used one of those excavator kits that they use for lizards to make all of these holes, and it turned out that she was wild caught. And I, for, I didn't even know to ask that question at the time. And she was really restless, and so she spent all of her time circling her enclosure, and she was falling. So immediately, I added a bunch more sand, trying to close the gap so that she couldn't fall. I ended up taking her out and getting her a Jamie's enclosure and filling it with cocoa fiber. But I still don't think she likes it that much, so I'm, I'm going to rehouse her again. Uh, into something else. But my point is, is that sometimes we can think that we have a great idea, an original idea, and it just may not be what is best for our tarantulas. So I just recommend doing a lot of research, and I think you're going to hear this advice echoed, you know, throughout uh, the community in regards to this question. Question number three, what is one positive change in you, hobby related? So this is, this is a difficult question because I haven't been in the hobby for that long. Right now it's May and I started in December. So I'm really looking at about six months. I have spent a lot of time 
with my tarantulas in that short amount of time. So really my experience with them has been more of an immersion because I do a lot of things here at home and so I'm around a lot and you know I can observe them. I've already seen them drink water, you know I've, I've watched all kinds of behaviors that sometimes people don't get to see until they've been around their tarantulas for years because they have to leave the house and you know do this and do that somewhere else but I have them you know here in my room or in my office so I can check on them a lot. When I first started my YouTube channel for tarantulas I was just doing it the same way that I have always carried on on my duck channel which actually started in 2005, several years before I had my ducks. And it was just a kind of diary to keep track of what I was doing. The Tarantula channel had a few short clips of feedings or, you know, things like this that I took with my phone. I wasn't very serious about it, but I was continuing to watch other channels and then I found out there was a tarantula YouTube group and I thought hmm you know I have I have a channel I've started although you know it's not that serious uh, maybe I should ask to join so I did and I was afraid of speaking on camera more knowing that I had a sort of dedicated audience and especially other people who are in the same hobby. These people are so knowledgeable and they they really come across so well. I was afraid to even show my face to the camera. I'm here in front of you now and I'm able to speak to you and I'm also trying to work on how I'm speaking. So that's my new task. Number four what do you regret bringing into your collection and what do you regret not getting when you could? I can't think of anything that I regret bringing into my collection. You know when it comes to animals I cannot say that I have regrets. I, they live with me, they're part of my family now. I, I can't imagine regretting having one because they are lives. I need to take care of them the best I can so there are no regrets. What do I regret not getting when I could? You know, I don't, I don't have anything there either because I have been really lucky. My first tarantula, little grandma stole a poker paste sling and then I happened to get uh, a grandma stole a pulchra for Christmas and it was really a fluke because someone had, draw, had taken it to the local pet store and then from there, I went on to get the uh, Chromatopelma cyaneopubescens and the Carabina versicolor. Uh, then I, I had the, the Aphonopelma calcades, a three inch female. And really, it continued from there. Uh, my first Old World was um, the. Oh, now I can't remember her, her, her scientific name. The King Baboon. And each time that I went up a step, say that I was told, hey, you know, the, the Chromatopelma cyaneopubescens tends to be a little skittish, or also the Versicolor. At first, I remember these changes being a little, I don't know if scary is the word, but there was a challenge there and as I worked my way into it I found that it was not scary like I thought it would be. So number five, number five, what are your favorite and least favorite aspects of the hobby? So my favorite aspects of the hobby besides just being completely fascinated and captivated by the tarantulas themselves, I enjoy that there was this YouTube Facebook group and that I was able to join 
and that I've met so many kind and interesting and encouraging people. It really means a lot to me. So that component, the people, have really been helpful. It's, it really closed a gap. These are not just people on YouTube anymore. Some of them are becoming my friends. And I enjoy learning from them. I enjoy seeing the different ways that everyone does things. And I enjoy, I enjoy meeting their kids on their channels. And I enjoy seeing the places they go. I saw a post the other day that said something about some of the YouTube channels seem to be more about the people themselves and not the animals. And I think I liked that comment because, you know, in general, some of those do seem to be true to some extent. But also, I thought about it and having the relationship I do with my fellow tarantula YouTubers, I'm interested in their lives. I do want to see where they go, um, what they're doing, um, how they live, what they like. I really do want to see them as a whole person. It really gives me more of an idea of what kind of animal lover they are, how they care for their tarantulas, you know, how they view life um, and you know that's that's very much a part of being there for the animals themselves so I think it's important. My least favorite aspects of the hobby. One thing that is always on my mind is death and if you were to ask me why I mean this started when I was a child I lived on a farm. Someone was always dying. And so I began thinking that it would happen to my grandparents. And I did this at a young age, so I really had some PTSD. My grandfather had it, an absolutely terrible cough. He had emphysema that should have killed him in his 60s but he lived to be 87. I always thought that when he started coughing, he was gonna die. I must have been seven, eight years old, and I would run and get my grandmother and beg her, come please, granddad, he's dying, because he'd cough out, but never take a breath in, and he'd turn red, and he'd go on and on. It was the most awful cough I've ever heard, but he went on like this for 30 years. I worry about every animal and when they pass away. And I know that, the, that with the male tarantulas, they're going to pass away sooner. I don't care if this makes me seem soft or whatever, or, you know, maybe it's about me. I don't know. I am, I'm, I'm really debating whether or not, you know, to send some of my male tarantulas off. Uh, to breed with a female. I'm going back and forth. I'm trying to think of what they would want. Another aspect of the hobby that I don't care for is when irresponsible people decide that they're going to get a tarantula on a whim. Or when they get a tarantula as a gift for someone who doesn't necessarily want it or isn't ready for it. This is something that happens in the waterfowl communities um, where there are lots of rescues and they are completely overwhelmed with ducklings and goslings and chicks that are just basically throw away. And it's really sad. And I just wish that we as human beings could be more careful and we could be more faithful to the pets that we choose to bring into our lives. Question number six. 
If you could collaborate with any YouTuber, who would it be and why? It's just really oh, difficult to pick one person and, you know, it can be a little divisive. I also like this idea that, that, that we're in a community, that we all have differences, and that there is something, there's some strength that we all bring to the table. And I hope that we can be careful not to form cliques or just, you know, leave people out or I guess these things happen naturally, you know, in societies and I guess our, our YouTube community is a society, our Tarantula Facebook group. I want to say that my answer to that question, who I would collaborate with and why, depends on what the subject is and why they want to collaborate with me or why I want to collaborate with them. So there isn't particularly a certain person and if there was, it would have to be for a certain reason. But I don't have one particular person that I'm, you know, dying to collaborate with and that I, there's nothing like that. So, so that's pretty much my answer to that question. Number seven is, what are your feelings on handling tarantulas? I think some people are really, really good at reading animals. And even if they are, accidents happen and they make mistakes. And sometimes they, they, or they get bitten. I would not recommend that someone just grab a tarantula and handle it to show off, you know, that they, look, I'm handling this big tarantula and they're doing it all taking a chance. Like, they don't have experience. They, they haven't watched the videos and they haven't seen how they, the people who have handled them nudge them onto their hands or off of their hands and they don't know body language. I mean, I do think that's, that can be a real big problem. And also, if the tarantula isn't interested in being handled, forcing it to be handled may not be a good situation at all for anyone. Another aspect of handling tarantulas that can be precarious is that the tarantulas can become injured if they fall or, you know, they're skittish, they don't want to be handled, and they bolt, you know, they can get hurt. I don't encourage handling, but I'm not completely against it either. I think it depends on the tarantula and it depends on the person. So that's my view on handling tarantulas. Question number eight is, what was your biggest mistake? My biggest mistake was, in the beginning, thinking that I could create a perfect habitat based on where each tarantula originated from. I didn't account for all the details or, you know, the standard practices in the hobby that may be in place for a reason. And I know that with anything, you know, changes take place and sometimes with husbandry, one thing will, will be deemed, you know, bad and then everyone moves on and adapts a new way of doing things. And, you know, sometimes I think it goes backwards. But in this case, I tried to house my um, Phonopelma calcides in a habisphere with the sand and the excavator kit that's usually used for lizards to make, you know, burrows. And she was wild caught. And that's my second mistake. I didn't do enough research and I didn't know that, you know, about wild caught tarantulas and if I had known more about it then I would not have wanted a wild caught tarantula. I think that being wild caught she was more restless so she did a lot of climbing in her enclosure and uh, she would fall albeit not far but you know it was it was far enough that I was uncomfortable so I added more sand and 
eventually, you know, within a few days, I could see that this was not good and it wasn't working. So I moved her into a different enclosure um, where she was happier. I also tried to, to transfer a um, haplocosmia Himalayana sling from a deli cup into a small enclosure late at night after I had been driving most of the day and had been in, at an expo and had only had two hours of sleep the night before and the little tarantula sling escaped uh, very quickly went into a box beneath my um, table and so I needed to figure out you know what to do to keep this one from bolting and get it into its enclosure so so in the six months that I've been keeping tarantulas those are those are the mistakes that stand out to me number nine what are your channel goals my channel goals are to First and foremost, I really like to get people to laugh. So if I'm able to add some content here and there that gets people laughing, great. Another goal of mine is to provide some educational material. And I am learning myself uh, about the hobby and I'm always learning from my fellow tarantula YouTubers. Um, but also, you know, I love research and so if I can come up with some things that, you know, are informational or, you know, the little things that might help, then, I mean, that'll be great as well. I don't have any lofty goals for the channel. I just want to have fun and I want to um, be able to present uh, information better be able to be creative and work on my photography skills and just just have it all around just be a fun thing to do so that is my goal for my channel number 10 is give three shout outs and the first shout out that i'd like to give is to spider woman in the uk and I'm particularly um, focusing on her do-it-yourself table guard video. Go and check this out. I think that it's amazing. I first looked at it and I thought, wow, you know, how is she going to turn these Tupperware containers into a table guard? And she did it and it looks it looks great and this is um, something that is to protect her tarantulas so that when she's rehousing them um, working with them they don't bolt and just you know right off the table and I know this can be an issue for a lot of people um, particularly you know if you have heavy furniture you'd have to move to look for your tarantula I mean you definitely want to take safeguards and this is an extra precaution that she's taking for the safety of her tarantulas so um, yes great um, shout out goes to spider woman and number two I'm giving a shout out to bluegrass inverts um, he recently they uh, featured a video called Kids and Tarantulas, and it's not an educational video, you know, talking about kids, you know, being around tarantulas or keeping tarantulas. It's actually his kids um, showing their tarantulas, and you can tell that they're very shy. I think their names are Bob and Jay, and, you know, they're with Dad, and Dad's, you know, showing them the camera, and... It's just a, it's really great to see that and you know the the you know dad is showing the kids how to overcome their shyness and they seem to just be little hams in front of the camera I almost wonder you know if they're going to really come out of their shells and and uh start doing things with dad more um also on on that channel you know there's a lot of breeding maintenance videos things like that so you know a lot of educational stuff 
The third shout out I have is to Gwentomology. Gwentomology is actually located here in Spokane, Washington, where I am. I mean, we don't have that big of a, of a tarantula YouTube Facebook group, but it's amazing that we have another YouTuber who is from Spokane. And this happens to be a father-daughter duo and they are amazing they they have a very educational channel the filmmaking is is spot on and they're really creative they bounce off of each other with humor with ideas when they're when they're um presenting they just make a wonderful team so really uh go go and check gwentomology out Number 11, show your favorite enclosure you've made. Uh, let me uh, go and, and do that now. Here's my favorite enclosure so far that I've created. This one I made from a display case made of acrylic. The display case is for um, dolls or maybe large cars, model cars. I drilled holes into the side of this enclosure in the shape of spiders and this is for ventilation. It has ventilation on top and in the back. These latches, this latch I got from Josh's Frogs, as well as the hinges. This base layer is for drainage. It has mesh and then it has a mixture of vermiculite and potting soil and a house plant that I've had in my home for decades. There's a piece of cork bark in the back, water dish, and my Carabina Versicolor has already made a web back here. So it's still a sling and this is a little hammock. I think that the tarantula is in pre-molt right now. Hasn't eaten for a little while. Maybe a couple weeks. So yeah, this is, this is my favorite enclosure that I have actually made myself. Number 12. I have a question from Carolina of Carolina's Tarantulas. Um, as I said before, she tagged me. So this is the question that she asked of me. Do you have any goals when it comes to your collection? So I, I don't have any goals as far as I want to collect all of this one species. I, I don't know that I've had enough time yet to really think about that. Right now, what's on my mind is collecting larger enclosures and setting them up. So I, I'm gonna put a, a shelf into my this room that I'm in right now, it's my office. I'm gonna put a shelf in here that can accommodate all kinds of enclosures. Um, and this is gonna become my tarantula room. So I would say for my collection right now, the goal is to set up the tarantula room, to set up their enclosures, to get them all moved into enclosures that will accommodate them as they transition into adulthood. Number 13. Number 13 is the part where I tag someone else. And I'm going to tag the invertebrarian. And he is located over in Wales. Um, and my question to him and the wee man is of all the inverts you've kept which has presented with the most challenging husbandry and why so please tell us um, what invert has been a real challenge for you and you know do you, do you still keep this this invert were you able to overcome all of those challenges and and become an expert at at keeping keeping this particular species, I would really like to know. So 
that concludes my tarantula tag two. I really appreciate you watching and um, I hope that I can provide something for you with my channel that will entertain you or help you out in some way. If you have any requests, please let me know and I will do my best to fulfill that request by making a video. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching.